Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in part three of our entertainment show each week, we premiere a new movie or TV series that is debuting here in Ireland and the UK, and especially here in Ireland where Irish eyes are smiling. It's the start of July now, and what better way to start than having a combo of three movies rolled into one? What do you get when Assault on Precinct 13 uh, meets Jaws meets Con Air and you roll them all into one? You get a movie called The Flood, uh, which is an all action slasher type uh, thriller, which deals with crocodiles, which deals with uh, uh, ex-convicts uh, trying to crash in a police station. And uh, you are dealing with the police themselves trying to deal with six inch of water uh, crocodiles and uh, criminals all bonding together. It features an all-star cast, including Nikki Whelan, Casper Van Den, Randy Wayne, uh, Kim DeLonghi, Ryan Francis, Jay Stamper, Randall J. Brown, and our special guest this evening, the one and only Mike Ferguson, who plays the role of Flight McCraw. Um, Mike, first of all, uh, pleasure to have you on uh, the show with us there this, this evening. And, uh, the flood. Did I do it justice? Uh, comparing it to a mashup of an uh, assault on Precinct Thirteen, Con Air, and Jaws, rolling all those three into one. Just replace the sharks with crocodiles, and I think we're on to we're hitting the roll there somewhere. Yeah. Look, I mean, here's the thing: is it's great. No, that those analogies are great of what this movie is. It's five prisoners being transferred across Louisiana during a fifty-year storm. And we have to shelter in place at a small police station, which is a, a sheriff's station, substation, which is run by Nikki Whalen. And all hell breaks loose. And we've got to try to work together with the prison guards to try to survive this evening. And, and it, it's, it, dude, it's a fun ride. It, you know, uh, I had a lot of fun on this. I get to fight Nikki Whalen in this movie. Uh, and it's an actually just a beautiful fight. Yeah, I can't wait for everybody to see it. And uh, Mike, how did this opportunity come to your doorstep? And were you intrigued about the prospect of heading off to Bangkok uh, in Thailand for a few weeks? You know, it's a funny story is that I wasn't the first pick for Floyd McGraw. I was the third pick. Uh, the first okay. pick uh, went to do the movie Meg, I was told, uh, because it was filming at the same time as Flood, uh, Meg 2. Um, the second guy got COVID. So a week out from the movie The Flood, I got contacted by the producer and he's like, yo, would you come out here? Would you read for this role? We need you out here by next week. And I was like, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? After I did the audition, he said yes. I was on a plane less than a week later. And flying out there, when I got on the plane on Friday, I got the script. And I was okay, shooting wow. Sunday, first day. Yeah. In Bangkok. And uh, tell me, uh, what was that sort of like? Because I do believe most of the set was created and built outside in uh, Bangkok uh, in terms of the special effects and the CGI that they did, that it was uh, built from scratch. So was it a really sort of um, well-crafted and created uh, concept in terms of sets, or was it ASAP that they, they had to put this up in the space in no time? No, no. Here's the thing. is This was really well planned out. We shot in couple different locations uh, playing the jail. Uh, but it was, we were in a building that they flooded, like literally flooded and would clean all the water and, and, and from contamination and all that stuff. But we were in a real building that they sealed up and flooded with water. So we have water coming from the ceiling. We have water coming from everywhere. And that would raise up to about waist level. And, and, and yeah, it, it was, it was a, you know, here's the funny thing is a lot of people are like, oh, when we got there, like, oh, because we realized we're going to get wet. It's a movie called The Flood. We're going to be in waist deep water with boots on and all that stuff. And, and uh, it was a, it was a great time. We all worked like that was one of the smoothest sets I've ever worked on with as much chaos as there was flooding buildings, rain machines, wind machines, all that stuff, it's all fun. It looks great on camera, but it's hard to do. You know what I'm saying? When you're trying to walk through a rain monsoon and they've got giant wind machines on you, it could be a little weird, man. It's uh, you're getting ready to take off. But yeah, they they built a lot of incredible sets for this movie. 
And uh, Mike, in terms of uh, the CGI effects, obviously, I do believe that there was no uh, sort of rubber sort of impersonations yeah. of the crocodiles or the alligators. Yeah. There was no actual, dare I say, live animals, which we already or knew that wasn't going to be the case. But there's even no sort of rubbers. There's no sort of thing. So in terms of imagining uh, some of those death scenes uh, for the actors and cast yeah. and imagining that sort of fear, was that sort of challenging for you in terms of uh, in terms of imagining that horror and portraying that horror? Because Obviously, you can't see seven foot crocodiles, but only in your head, really. You can't really yeah. see any representation in front of you. That was what was the most challenging thing about this. Is we weren't, there was no tennis ball on anything. We were, we were just, it was all what was in our head. And in this movie, I do get to fight a gator. And, uh, you know, I do all right. You're going to have to watch the movie to find out how that all happened and what happens. But I fight a gator in this movie. And it was one-on-one -on -one me and I'm fighting an invisible creature. Then it had me on ropes or anything. And uh, it turned out pretty cool. It's a, was a very fun scene. And I'm trying to react to the director calling out direction when he's making it up on the spot. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. you know what the size of the room and what we're doing and everything. And, and, uh, but yeah, it's, it was, it was, it was a, it was a really fun exercise in acting. And, and really tested my believability about things. You know what I'm saying? Look, there's no, nothing here. We got to act with it. You know what I'm saying? You got to sell for this invisible creature. You know what I'm saying? That you're imagined. And I do believe, uh, Mike, uh, in terms of some of the cast uh, got to see uh, a copy was sent to them afterwards in terms of the sort of the final product. So when was the first time, have you got to see it yet? Or when was the first time that you got to see some of those zines that you're in? I I, I did an ADR, I did a two ADR sessions back in last November uh, during uh, American Film uh, Market. And I got to see what I was just, but I haven't seen the whole movie at all. I've talked to, have you seen it? Uh, apart from the trailer, no, I haven't. No, uh, I talked to the guy who hired me, Damon Hillian, hmm. and uh, I talked to the director a couple times. They've seen it, said it looks great. Uh, I want to see it, and I'm not going to get a chance to see it till July 14th, just like everybody else, just like myself, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, I mean, uh, yeah, continue. That's part of the magic of movies, man, is that. We as artists, we're the last people to see what we make sometimes, and that's okay. You know, I'm excited to, to on the 11th, I'm in a movie called Operation Black Ops with Tito Ortiz, Chris Cyborg. And then on the 14th, I'm in The Flood with Nikki Whalen, Louis Mandalore, Casper Van Dien, uh, Jay Stamper. I, I've got a couple great movies that I just, I'm excited to be able to video on demand or go to the theater and watch 11th and the 14th. And you mentioned some of the cast there, and I suppose you've been in with some of the big boys in terms of action uh, movies in Hollywood, in terms of uh, stunt movies, in terms of that. And tell me, obviously, Casper Van Den, can he hold it up there uh, with the your John Claude's and your Dolph Lundgren's? And uh, I, I've worked with Dolph Lundgren. I've worked with Jean Claude Van Damme, and Casper Van Den is dude he, it, to be on set with him and i'm an official rico's roughneck now just to let you know yes. looks, a little starship troopers uh uh yes. reference it, he i mean i've worked with everybody i've worked with dolph longer i've worked with casper i've worked with uh just so many different great actors and casper van Dien is just a class act him and his wife wendy uh they, they're just amazing people uh yeah, I, I can't say enough about Casper Van Dien. I've done two movies with him. Okay. And uh, Mike, in terms of the sort of the flood, in terms of the story and the plot line, I know you don't want to give too much away, but about your character, Fly McCraw, what did you try and base him on? Did you look at any sort of criminal movies in the past uh, in oh. terms of a character? I've known a million people just like Floyd McGraw. See, the difference in Floyd McGraw and me is that Floyd McGraw is a Nazi with a swastika on his forehead. In real life, I'm Jewish with a star David next to my eye. But this is, I mean, look, in building him 
and building the character. I actually got, you know, I, like I said, I got the script on a Friday and I was out in Thailand for two weeks. I really got to develop this character and do a lot of really cool shit with him. And, and, and I, with full support from the director who was actually the writer too. And, and I got to talk to him and Floyd, Floyd's just one of those hillbilly scumbag weirdos. If you ever go to the South and, and go to some of those carnivals, you'll, you'll run into Floyd McGraw down in Louisiana, Georgia, Alabama. There's a lot of Floyd McGraws I met. Yeah. And tell me in terms of the, the chemistry uh, between some of the criminals, I saw some of the takes and it definitely looks like there's a, uh, a good sort of, uh, dare I say, good vibes in terms of how you play off each other between yourself and uh, Randall J. Bacon, who plays yeah. uh, Jonathan Bow. You seem to have that sort of click in terms of you to sort of feed off each other. There seems to be a good sort of uh, duo, dare I say, in terms of how it plays out in the movie. Oh, yeah. Look, man, Randall Bacon is a terrific actor. As soon as I got the script, I... I, I uh... What was really good with being with like Casper Van Dien is that every movement and every action has a moment to it. And Casper Van Dien was so kind as an actor to help me find those moments. And he would throw it out. Why don't you do this? I was like, dude, thanks. And the director was super open and, and, and cool with it. And, and uh, yeah, man, it was, it, it was a really fun ride. And I got to do a lot of, in my death, I didn't even like, I, I didn't like what was written. It was very vague. So I got to talk to the director during lunch, you know, like a week out before we filmed that. I was like, hey, I think this will work. He's like, well, let's, let's do both. And then he's like, wow, that was great. After I did what I was going to do, he's like, we're just staying with that. I was like, sick. You know what I'm saying? But this was a really fun, creative cast, a great director, great writer, great producing team. I I'm excited. This is a summer creature feature. This, this is very much like Assault on Precinct 13. It's very much con air. Um, every criminal has his own little personality, and that shows through. We each have these own little our moments, so to speak. Okay. Just a really cool and, moment. And uh, Mike, in terms of shooting in Bangkok and Thailand, you shot uh, during COVID, and obviously the heat and humidity there as well, in terms of actors performing and in the middle of the, it's probably the summer as well. So I do believe you were still sort of shooting there at maybe nine o'clock at night, uh, in terms of good scenes, because it was just too hot and humid during the day. Yeah, we would do all nights. We would do all nights on this movie. It's, yeah, we would work night shift because it was crazy hot and humid during the day. And then we're in a building that is filled waist deep water. You know what I'm saying? So we're doing this all at night. I mean, it was, and it was filled with so much chlorine. And because it looks cool on, uh, on film, I kept wetting myself down till my skin burned. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I knew it was going to look great on camera. So why, why not? I mean, look, a little bit of, uh, well, a lot of chlorine bleach isn't, bleach isn't going to kill me. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it was just one of those things we grinned and bared it. And, and, and you know, I, I can honestly say it was one of the best filming experiences I've had as an actor. The floor. And speak, speaking about another film uh, coming out your way, July the 11th, and uh, teaming up with a few UFC legends uh, in terms of mixed martial arts uh, sort of world as well. Two guys who know how to be in many brawls down through the years and uh, yeah. know how to hold it with the best of them. You've yeah. acted many of those sort of roles in terms of your career and seen many actors act. But these guys are the real deal. They've sort of done it in the ring as well. There's no acting with these guys. No, 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 no. Here's the thing is I just finished a movie. Uh, I finished a movie last year called Operation Black Ops with Tito Ortiz. We all know who he is. And Chris Cyborg. She's the Bellator champion. She looks, she's ruthless. I remember when I first saw Chris Cyborg come out, just destroying people. Like literally she's got a great career even until now. Like I said, she's a champ. And I got to do a movie with them, us killing right wing Nazis in Texas, saving the world. And so July 11th, you can see me, Chris Cyborg, and Tito Ortiz save the world from right-wing Nazis with nuclear coats. That really happened. And uh, But yeah, Operation Black Ops, it comes out on the 11th. It's uh, through Uncorked Entertainment. I just did another action movie with them called Breakout with Louis Mandalore and uh, Brian Krause. 
and that's out now too. You can watch that. But the, you know, I, I I get to work with all these cool people over and over. The same directors, producers. It's something easy to work with, and uh, it's a blessing. Like literally going from action movie to action movie to action movie. I just wanted to yabber about that for a minute. Yeah, Mike, and you mentioned that obviously so many of the greats of the industry uh, crossing paths with them. You mentioned Dolph, you mentioned John Claude, maybe like I don't know, probably Michael J. White. You probably came across him. In oh, your Michael time. J. White. Uh, look, I, I just signed a deal memo to a movie where Michael J. White was supposed to play my role, and I literally just signed a deal memo on that. I'm shooting it between July and August. Uh, it's got a really great cast. I can say it now, but I'll probably get in trouble. Uh, it has one of the, the stars from Twilight in it and okay. it's an action movie and I'm shooting that in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. So as I just mentioned, all the, the, the icons of the, uh, the martial arts. So I suppose you, maybe yourself and Wesley have crossed paths as well down to the ears. Uh, oh yeah, man. Look, it's a small world. Hollywood's a small world, especially if there's somebody that's a fighter. In real life, I'm a black belt in Krav Maga, and I trained MMA for two years. So, uh, and I'm big, and I'm scary. So when I first got into business, I was selling for everybody. Here's this big guy with muscles who understands what, what what's going on, doesn't get in his feelings. So I would get beat up by Johnny Mesner, or I'd get beat up by Nikki Whalen, or I'd get beat up. What's, I, I just fought another woman in an action movie called RSVP. I fight the lead of the movie in that. It was an action movie I just shot in Colorado two months ago. And it's got it's got some uh, uh, Wing Chun experts in it. They had hook sword fights. There's katana fights in this. Like, literally, I just, it's called uh, RSVP. And the closest thing I can get, compare it to is Bruce Lee Game of Death. Okay, wow, 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 wow. I got a lot of cool stuff coming out, man. Yeah, it's busy time for you. I was going to say, uh, when uh, the downtime, there's no downtime for Mike Ferguson in terms of getting to maybe a bit of R and R, maybe get to visit the world, maybe come our way in Ireland. And yeah. Mike, are you all these sort of projects that are in USA bound? You mentioned Thailand. Are you very much an actor open to traveling the world? If a project was good in the UK, if it was good in Ireland with the right directors, producers, is Mike Ferguson open no matter where the location, as long as it's got a good script, a good plot? and uh, a, a good concept to you or do you very much with everything going on at the moment it's a busy hectic lifestyle of yours and do you I rather much prefer opportunities that are stateside i i love to travel i did a tv show called death squad back in 2019 i lived in armenia for two months yeah. and we shot 13 hours of content uh 13 one-hour episodes and uh I've been in Mexico several times making movies. I've been all over the United States, but yeah, I love to travel. And, and, and that's part of the, the thing about this acting thing is I, I have been able to travel, work with amazing people. And no, I'd love to come to Ireland or wherever. Look, I, I have a suitcase of travel. That's my whole thing is I'm, I'm like an old carny is, you know, old vaudeville, like literally I'm look at my wares, but I mean, that's, it's uh yeah man it's 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 a fun ride super fun ride yeah we'll have to get you over in our shores uh sometime soon to depict some character from irish history uh, and uh, god uh, bless you yes that, that's what i'm talking the, about the battles of uh the the battles of the irish versus the english uh, but before we let you go and uh, uh, mike ferguson you might enlighten all our audience all our listeners Obviously, you have two movies uh, coming out, but this uh, episode we do uh, Operation Blackout. We do invite all our listeners, our viewers, do check that out uh, on video on demand on our on the movie screens as well. But in specific for the flood now out nationwide and cinemas all across Ireland on June the fourteenth, uh, July the fourteenth. Apologies. Uh, what's the store, Mike, for people that go to the cinema screens uh, when they sit down? Uh, they have their popcorn, their mod teasers the pepsi put the feet up to watch and flood uh the flood and see you in it what are they going to get for the hour and a half to two hours of their movie experience they're gonna they're gonna get an action thrill ride they're gonna uh, it's it's a great action movie mixed with a little horror they're gonna get their money's worth this is a summer 
fun movie. It doesn't take itself too serious, but it does. It's serious. And some of the performances in this are just legendary. And, 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 and it was an honor to work with all of these legends. Look, man, if you want to see me fight Nikki Whalen, this is the movie for you. If you want to see me fight an alligator and do okay, maybe. Watch this movie. <laughs> If you want to, you know, if you want to have a thrill ride, just forget about your life for an hour or two. This is the movie for you. This is fun. This is not, we're not curing cancer. We're entertaining people because that's what we are is we're entertainers. That's true, Mike. I better go down uh, to the local bookies uh, tomorrow and put a few pound on you in, in terms of beating up that uh, alligator as well. Oh, yeah. I wonder if I, get my, if I get a return on the, will they take odds for that, uh, Mike Ferguson versus an alligator? <laughs> uh, but for the moment, uh, Mike, uh, for the moment, an absolute pleasure for me, Jim Conlon, to talk to you on the airwaves. Do check out Mike Ferguson's movies, Operation Blackdown and specifically The Flood, out in July the 14th, nationwide. All-star cast, Nikki Wheel and Casper Van Den, Randy Wayne, Ryan Francis, Randall J. Bacon, uh, Kim DeLocky, uh, but our special guest this evening, Mike. Pleasure, and hopefully, please, God, we'll get you on again sometime in the near future. Oh, you will, for sure, 1,000%. It was a pleasure talking to you, my friend. We got to get me out to Ireland. Yeah, we will indeed. We'll catch up, Mike. Mike, pleasure, mate. Take care. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. You have a great day.